I was a soldier who served at Camp Fuller, which was in Rockford, Illinois, in 1862. And I've been brought from back in time to tell a story. A story that inspired the people of 1862, and it is with hope that it inspires the people of today also. It's called the Camp Fuller 911 Tribute, and it starts out like this. We have shared the incommunicable experience of war. We have felt, we still feel, the passion of life to its top. In our youths, our hearts were touched with fire. Oliver Wendell Holmes. September 14, 2001 was set aside as a day of national remembrance for those who perished in the September 11th terrorist attacks. September 14, 2001 also marked the 187th anniversary of the writing of the Star Spangled Banner. Now I know in years past there's been some debate as to whether the Star Spangled Banner should be our national anthem or not. But when Francis Scott Key wrote that song on September 14, 1814, our nation was in a state of great peril. Now the British, uh, we were at war with the British, and they had invaded Washington, D.C., set our capital on fire, and even burned the White House to the ground. Now having done that, the British weren't finished yet, neither was America. So the British withdrew their troops from Washington, D.C., they took some prisoners with them, they got on board their ships, and they set sail for Baltimore. The British knew that more than likely if they could take Baltimore, so too could they take America. But one thing stood in between the British and Baltimore, and that was Fort McHenry. Now Fort McHenry had a flag that was absolutely huge. It measured 30 feet wide by 42 feet long. And when it flew over the fort, it could be seen for miles around. Now, Francis Scott Key had a friend who was one of the prisoners taken from Washington, D.C. With President Madison's permission, he set sail on a boat under a flag of truce to meet up with the British to negotiate for the release of his friend. Well, he met up with the British and he successfully negotiated the release of his friend. But before he could leave, the British said to him, You're not going anywhere, not until after we protect this fort. And the British placed the guard on board the ship that Francis Scott Key was on, and Francis Scott Key was forced, more or less, to watch the battle. Now, as the guns of the British Navy just pounded Fort McHenry throughout the day, throughout the day that flag still flew over the fort. And as the shelling raged into the night, the only time Francis Scott Key could see if that flag was there or not was by the rocket's red glare with the bombs bursting in air that light up the sky like fireworks. But then, late in the night, the shelling stopped. Francis Scott Key could not see if that flag was there or not. And Francis Scott Key paced back and forth on the deck of that ship all night long. And as he paced, I imagine he might have asked himself some questions. Questions like, am I gonna be an American tomorrow? Are we still going to be the land of the free and the home of the brave? And he paced. Finally, the morning of September 14th, 1814 came. Francis Scott Key looked towards Fort McHenry. And as the sun slowly inched its way up into the sky, I can imagine Francis Scott Key saying a short prayer. Dear God, let that flag be there. Please, please let that flag be there. When the sun was far enough up in the sky, by the dawn's early light, Francis Scott Key could see that that flag was still there. If it was in today's world, Francis Scott Key would have been pumping his fist going, yes, yes, yes! But things were a little bit different back then. Francis Scott Key was a lawyer and not a musician, and he decided he was gonna write a song about his experience. So he took the melody of a song that was popular at the time. It happened to be an old English drinking song. But when Francis Scott Key set the words of his experience to the melody of that song, he changed the meaning of that song a whole lot. And that song, my friends, is our national anthem.
That's good.